sports was the nation's growing obsession. And a game called football, a new game, emerging out of collegiate competition towards a fledgling professional circuit, seemed to hold the door open, at least a crack, for the black athlete. As early as 1920, when the league began, there were two players, Fritz Pollard and Bobby Marshall, uh, who were both African-Americans and played in the National Football League. But Pollard became the key. Pollard was the one that brought other black players in. He kind of bounced around from city to city, as a lot of pros did in the day, and he knew where black players could or should play. Pollard, in addition to being a great player, was also the first African-American coach in the National Football League. Fritz Pollard is the gold standard, really, when you talk about a guy who not only was a coach and a player in the new NFL, but also on the college level, was uh, an amazing star at Brown. He had a lot of speed, and he was tough. And he could take a pounding, and he can give it out as well. We suddenly become colorblind when we have a motive. And I think that's what would happen when you would see a Fritz Pollard being given an opportunity to play football. I mean, it wasn't that in the 20s anybody was attempting to break a barrier of any kind. It was really just opportunistic. For all of the legal restrictions on black equality and racial equality, there's contradictions everywhere. Whether it's a school, uh, as in a university or a college team, whether it's a professional team, there's a tremendous economic gain to be made by using black labor. No African-American athlete in the late 19th or early 20th century got to be just an athlete. He had to carry the hopes of an entire community. It's not enough to run fast, to score touchdowns. The key is that you're carrying the burden of race with you. The men that carried that burden, the tiny handful of African Americans in football in the 1920s, remain the exception. Men like Fritz Pollard, Bobby Marshall, and Paul Robeson remained in the shadows behind names like Lambeau, Grange, and Nagurski. And then, in the increasingly crowded terrain of American sports, just as professional football gained a modest foothold in the East and Midwest, came that abrupt turn of history that altered everything to come.